Have you fully considered the consequence of indulging in emotions like anger, stress, worry, frustration? If you have struggled with keeping stress, anger, any of these emotions under control, then whatever you do, I'm inviting you to listen to this episode, take notes, and see the positive impact on your life for yourself. Welcome to the Create Your Vibrant Life podcast. If you are the type of person who's a visionary, who wants more from life, who has high dreams and aspirations, wants to evolve spiritually and impact the world, and in the meantime, have time and energy to do the things that are important to you, then whatever you do, tune into this podcast every week. I'm your host, Padma Ali. I help stressed out overachievers find clarity and awaken to their highest potential using my unique NEW, New You Blueprint. I combine neuropsychology, energy healing, and wisdom to create long-lasting changes, and that's what I bring to you in this podcast. I've had a successful career in the field of psychology for over 20 plus years, along with extensive training and experience in ancient healing practices, which I now bring to my coaching work with my clients. And that's what inspired me to do this podcast, to bring this knowledge and wisdom to the world. So I'm incredibly grateful for you to be a part of this journey with me, and I'm so excited to serve you. So welcome. Welcome to episode number 21 of the Create Your Vibrant Life podcast. This is your host, Padma Ali. So today's episode is titled, Your Stress, Worry, Anger Comes with a Price. You know, one of the reasons I chose to do an episode again on emotions is because one of the most downloaded episodes from my podcast is the episode on anger. I think it's episode number eight, if I'm not mistaken. And the second one to that was eight habits that can destroy your relationship. I think that is episode number 15, if I'm not mistaken. Again, I can't keep track. (laughs) So, you know, I was thinking about this. Why are these two episodes so popular? And when I tune into it, what I realized was many people have a hard time containing emotions like anger. And it's almost like they want to work on it. They want to not be consumed by it, but they don't know how or what to do or how to even be around emotions. They just feel uncomfortable when they have these emotions, but they don't know what to do with it. And it almost takes over their life, meaning the emotions come, they're consumed by it, they give into it, and then and then they realize that, ah, oh, I don't want to be consumed by this. I don't like this. I don't want this. But they don't know what to do. So I think my sense is that Everybody's looking for solutions around managing emotions, but don't really know what to do with it. And the other reason I decided to do this episode on emotions again is because I'm noticing a higher level of stress around me, especially as the uncertainty of schools opening, not opening, hybrid, whatever is happening, the case is going up again, at least in the U.S., And these conversations are happening. And I noticed that, especially, you know, I'm not very much on Facebook other than for the things that I need to do for my group program and then also for my work. But when I hop on there, I see random things pop up on my newsfeed. And I noticed posts like, I'm just numbing myself with alcohol, or I'm just waiting for this to be over, or I can't deal with, this was the, this was a good one. <laughs> I can't deal with rich people having the option of hiring private tutors while I'm stuck trying to figure out childcare, all these like anger, jealousy, frustration, all these things like this random things that pop up in my newsfeed. And I realized that, wow, like people are really struggling again. And if you're getting caught up in an emotional whirlwind, 
then my question to you is, have you fully realized what is that costing you? Yeah, emotions like anger and frustration, stress, jealousy, they come with a price. You may or may not have realized that already, but it comes with a price. So here's what I'm going to do in this episode. I'm going to take this in two different directions. One is from the perspective of what happens when you are consumed by emotions, like more practical, like what happens in the brain, how do you deal with it, what do you do with it, and stuff like that. And the other is from a very spiritual and a manifestation angle. And in both of these, I'm going to be sharing some practical takeaways as well. So here's again what I've noticed. If you're like most people, you might not even be conscious when you're getting into worry and anger and stress and any of these emotions. And here's usually how it goes. You encounter a situation, the thoughts come, emotions follow, you give into it, the cycle continues, doesn't it? Isn't that what happens? So my, oh my goodness, I'm saying so, so many times. I'm not even, you know, I don't do very much editing of these podcasts because hey, this is life, right? Like you get, you get, you get me in the real form. <laughs> so there I go again with the so's. I'm just noticing that it comes up in how I speak. Anyways, let's back to the episode. I'm digressing. <laughs> Let's take the current state of affairs in the U.S. at least. There's a, there's so much uncertainty of how what's happening right now with the numbers rising up, the schools opening, hybrid model, the fear. There's like I'm just noticing a lot of that. And many moms I know are freaking out. And I get it. Guys, I have young kids. I have a business to run. And I don't know about your kids. My, my kids need, to, need a lot of attention. So having them do their thing at home, which is like, what what is that? Virtual learning at home while I attend to my own business or my clients is just a fairy tale. It's not going to happen. <laughs> so I get it. I get it right, why people are stressed. But have you noticed that here's what most people do? They ruminate, they think about the situation over and over and over and over again. They talk about it incessantly. The emotions run high they keep talking about it and they try to find a solution. They try to numb it by watching TV. They drink alcohol, eat junk food, maybe try to manage it by therapy and exercise. And then they rinse and repeat the whole thing over and over and over again. So what's the price? What's the price you're paying for this? So let me ask you this. I'm going to invite you to think back upon a time where you were stressed. How did your body feel? How did, you, how did your mind feel? How long did you spend thinking about it? And by the way, you may or may not already know this. This is purely the function of the limbic brain, the reptilian brain. Anytime it perceives anything as a threat, it will go into fight or flight mode. I guarantee you that. This is science. And you probably have already noticed the detrimental effect of stress physiologically and psychologically, right? Like you already know that. It's pretty common sense and popular. And if you just do a Google search, you'll find information. In fact, NCBI quotes a study stating the impact of stress on memory, cognitive function, cardiovascular function, immune system. Goodness, goodness, we don't need our immune system compromised now, do we? <laughs> Yeah, and knowing all this, we still resort to stress. Do you know why? It's because, again, you may already know this or it might be new information to you because the brain works on habit. The same reason you know exactly how to ride a bicycle, not having ridden one for almost a year, you know exactly how to ride it the moment you get on a bicycle. That same habit, like that's how the brain functions. It wants to retain information so that it doesn't have to create new, it doesn't have to do it all over again. And that same reason makes the emotion a habit. Emotions are habit driven. You may or may not have realized that. Hey, by the way, this is complete digression. If you have found value in this podcast, and if you are like most of my listeners who want to help others, most of my listeners, most of my clients, are they want to create an impact in the world. 
And if you are like them, please leave a review for this podcast because the feedback I've received that this podcast is so valuable. And I, if you are like most of my listeners who want to impact the world, this will help a lot of people if you leave a review and it'll come up more higher up in the search engines and it'll help a lot of people. Don't you find this information really valuable, like what I'm sharing, even if you know that the fact that you know that emotions are a habit, what does that tell you? What does it tell you? You can change it, right? Like that's why I'm sharing this information, because when we know what's happening and why we do certain things, it's much easier to change it than when it's unconscious. I once had a mentor tell me that the things that we need to be most fearful of are the unconscious patterns and habits that we resort to that we don't even know exist. Because the moment we become bring awareness, it's so easy to shift it. Well, it's not easy, but at least you know, oh, it's habit driven. I can change this. And the fact that you're listening to this podcast, also this episode specifically tells me you want to manage your emotions. You want to do something different with your emotion, right? And so this this knowledge like wow it's just a habit i can change it then isn't it valuable for you if you can leave a review so it'll come up higher up on the search engines and let's resume back our what i was talking about so i was telling you about how emotions are a habit especially anger all of those negative emotions that keep us stuck are habit i remember you know pretty much all my life being stressed out Till a few years ago, I would say, when I decided to let it go, when I know when I know what the information I'm sharing with you, like I decided, all right, it's time to let it go. But I remember pretty much being stressed out all my life. You know, this is kind of funny, but it isn't. I was five years old. I still remember this like yesterday. I remember waking up. I grew up in the British kind of schooling system. So there was a lot of pressure, and especially coming from the Asian culture, guys, it's <laughs> tiger moms are not <laughs> a myth. They're real. They're real. <laughs> um, I remember being five years old, waking up and saying, oh, my God, like I have to do well on this test. We used to be tested at five years old. Can you believe it? Oh, my God. It's so crazy. It's crazy to think back on that time. I don't know how it is right now in in the Indian system, but at that time, like it was so important to ace tests and to get good grades and godness. Now, when I think about it, I cringe. I'm like, oh, goodness, I'm glad I'm not raising my kids in that environment. I was so stressed out. It's not even funny. In fact, my parents would tell me to not study because I, would, I was so obsessed in getting good grades. But here's what happened. Here's what I, I, I still, this is funny, but I still have to count with my fingers because the stress was so high that I don't think I retained any important information. I know I'm smart, I'm intelligent, but like when it comes to certain things like math, I have to, again, these are stories I've told myself that I, I have to, I need a paper and pen to write it down. I don't know what basic algebra means. And all these things, because I was so darn stressed, I couldn't retain the information. It's crazy. It's crazy. But that's what stress does. That's what being in anxious does. I was so anxious as a child. And here is, is what happened. Like it was so it became such a habit driven thing that for everything, I would just get stressed out. Like that's exactly how I dealt with life. And it's so it was so unconscious, too. So what's the price? What's the price of giving into emotions like this? I'm inviting you to think about somebody, you know, who has been consumed by anger or stress or jealousy or anxiety. Can you see how stuck they are? Can you see how they're literally like a hamster on a wheel, running around in circles, going nowhere, thinking about the same problem, talking about the same problem over and over and over again without any resolution? And you may or may not have already seen this in your own life. When you are anxious and stressed out, it's so hard to find clarity, right? You're so consumed by those emotions. I love this quote by Einstein. You cannot solve the problem with the same thinking that caused it. You cannot solve the problem with the same thinking that caused it. Yeah, why would worry help you solve the problem? Why would it? It won't. 
But we don't know that because we're so habit driven that we give into those emotions over and over again. It's like a cue happens. It's like, you know, you switch on the light, you, you switch on the switch and, you know, the light comes on. It's literally like that. Like your brain goes, all right, the switch is clicked. I need to do A, B and C. One of the things I learned early on in my career as a psychotherapist over 20 years ago is processing emotions. It was driven in all my master's program, in my internships, and when I was working with clients, with my supervisors, with people I would consult with after I got my license, process emotions, emotions, validate emotions, validate, validate, validate. And now in my work, I know that validating emotions doesn't help. Processing emotions doesn't often help. We need to process it, but not for the sake of processing it for understanding. We need to process it for understanding where it came from so you can let it go. But it's not for validation, but that's what most people do. We, we want to feel validated for our emotion. And in my work, in my personal life, I've retrained my brain, acknowledge the emotion and let it go, especially energetically, let it go rather than ruminate on it. When you focus on something, it expands, doesn't it? So when you focus on emotions of why I'm feeling the way I do why, and, and, and this is not working or I'm so stressed or I'm so angry, it just expands, doesn't it? And this is why I truly think therapy often keeps you stuck. There's a place and there's a place for therapy in the world. Please don't get me wrong. But therapy will keep you stuck if you're going in there, repeating the stories that has happened in your life over and over again. It almost gives people justification on why their feelings are valid. Like that, that first sentence I said right in the beginning of this podcast, I'm mad at rich people because they have the option of private tutoring. Like, come on, right? If you, if you keep talking about it and saying, I'm so jealous and I'm so angry and all that, what would happen? It would just validate your feelings of being angry. And it reinforces that emotion and the thought and that story, doesn't it? It makes it a habit then. More again and again, it reinforces the fact that this is a habit. Now, can you tell how powerful this is when you fully understand this? Now, you may be wondering how to break this habit of the brain if this is so powerful and I've done it like, what, 30, 40 years? How do I break this habit? You know, I do this with my clients all the time. We clear it energetically because whatever is causing that emotion to be present, there's often a belief behind it. There's often a story behind it. There's often a baggage behind it. There's something that's keeping it stuck. So we clear it from both neuropsychological perspective and also from energetics. From energetically, we clear it so the roots are gone. When you clear the roots, the branches stop growing, doesn't it? So here's the thing. It's not just about clearing it energetically. It's also about working on it, taking actions. And here is something I tell my clients. If you have a problem, first, the first thing you need to do, not you need to, and this is my invitation, people will do what they want to do, is to stop talking about it. Stop talking about it because the more you talk about it, the more it reinforces that this is a problem and this will never get solved or like how bad you feel or whatever the emotions are behind it. It's going to keep repeating that over and over and over again. It solidifies the neural pathway in your brain. So that's my first takeaway for you. Stop talking about it. Talk about it only with people who know who are going to help you figure this out. And my second takeaway for you is to manage your emotion. Manage it. Breathe. Take a deep breath, acknowledge it, <sighs> acknowledge, okay, I'm facing this right now, I'm experiencing this right now, bring on the curiosity hat, and <sighs> let it go. Let me ask you this, where will you be six months from now if you keep going down the stress, emotional rabbit hole, where will you be? You might say the same place, and I will say worse off because you have six more months of solidifying that in your brain. Six more months of that neural pathway in your brain becoming so solid. You've heard me give you this analogy before of like walking down a trail and the trail, the trail route is getting solid. You know exactly the, your new, your neurons in your brain know exactly which way to fire and it's going to keep going down that path. We need to make new neural pathways if you want something to change. 
So that's from a more practical standpoint. That's what's happening in your brain. This is one of my core pillars of the work that I do, the brain aspect, the neural neuropsychology aspect. Now I'm going to bring in a second way of addressing this, the spiritual and manifestation level and the price you pay on that front when you give in to emotions. Another quote by Einstein. Again, these are so powerful. When you can really get these, these words, it will start to shift you completely. Einstein says everything is vibration. That is the premise of the spiritual path around emotions. If everything is vibration, emotions and thoughts have vibrations. Think about anger, okay? Just think about anger, the time you felt angry about something. Have you noticed how your body temperature actually changes when you're angry, like you become hot? What is that? That's energy, isn't it? Don't take my word for it. Research on your own and find out what emotions have the highest vibration and what emotions have the lowest vibration. Now, what's the price that you pay for when you give in to emotions on an on a energetic, on a spiritual level? What happens is that when you are angry and frustrated, the likelihood of more of those things happening that, that will cause you to feel more angry and frustrated is high. This quote by Abraham Hicks, again, summarizes the whole thing. It says, as you think, you vibrate. As you vibrate, you attract. As you think, you vibrate. As you vibrate, you attract. That summarizes what I was saying. That saying where it, when it rains, it pours. That's why many people often say, oh, my God, like this bad thing happened and then bad things kept happening over and over and over again. Why is that? Because there's a vibration of whatever that feeling emotion is that you're putting out there that is causing situations to come into your life that will cause you to feel more of the same emotions. And some of you might get triggered by this because you might look at it as like I'm saying to you that you are causing this to happen. Well, in some aspects, I am saying that, that, it, that you, are, you are a cause. I'm not saying you're causing this. I'm saying you are the cause. And when you are holding on to something unconsciously, it's creating more of those same things. Let me take a step back. If this is the first time you're hearing this information, there is, first of all, there's no blame. Blame is one of the lowest vibration. I don't resort to blame. I don't say that this is your fault. That is not the reason I'm bringing this up. I'm bringing this up so that you can become aware that, wow, my thoughts create the situations in my life. So if I want to change what's happening, if I want to stop that, all I have to do is change my thoughts and change my emotions, and then things will start to shift. Want it. The universe is always reflecting you. The universe is never testing you. The universe is always reflecting you. To me, it's very empowering to think that I am the captain of my ship versus life is happening to me versus why is this happening? Why can't I get out of this dump hole? Why is this? Why, 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 why? It's only going to keep you trapped, won't it? But if I start to see it as I can change, I can create the change that I want. It's very empowering. And it starts with changing your thoughts and your emotions. And friends, I have been there. I am not speaking about it from just speaking about it. I have experienced this. I have been stuck. I have given into my negative thoughts. I have kept trapped. I have, I have felt trapped. I have said things like, why is this happening to me? You know, when I was very, very sick many, many years ago, this is, this is at least 15, 16 years ago, or when, however long, I don't even remember now. It's, it's past. I remember feeling so helpless. I was I was so sick. It was sick beyond measure, just hopeless and helpless and just waiting for this to end. Kind of like what's happening right now, isn't it? When I hear people saying things like, oh, I'm just waiting for this COVID thing to be ended, to end. I'm just waiting for that vaccine to come out, like as though that's going to solve all the problems. It isn't. Yeah, but I was there. I was just waiting, waiting for this illness to be done. I even would go to the place of like, I just want my life to end because I can't deal with this anymore. And I kept hitting a dead end after dead end after dead end, like nothing would work. Western medicines fail. I was on so many medications. Nothing worked. It would work for a little bit and then everything would fail. I tried alternate, like I tried so many things. I was in pain all the time. Nothing, nothing worked. 
And pain would fuel me to feel more pain. And then I would feel more helpless and more hopeless. And then I would be, you know, I was just not like no matter what I did, nothing worked because I hadn't shifted it from the inside out. I kept going to this place of why is this happening, feeling angry, feeling frustrated, feeling angry at the world. You know, I still remember this is a slight, slight digression, but it's a good story. I was such a bullhead back then, like I would not give into it. Like there was this fight, constant fighting inside. There was so much, there was so much uh, struggle. And I still remember this. I was a therapist back, obviously I was, I was practicing therapist back then. And despite being so sick, I would still go see clients. God knows what I was thinking. And I remember between clients, I like getting this call from my functional medicine doctor saying, get my ass to the hospital <laughs> ASAP <laughs> because I was so anemic. I had no blood in my, I mean, not no blood. I had very, very little. Um, I was so anemic. He says, he said to me, I remember this, like it just ha like it happened yesterday. The, the message was, he saw my reports and went, I have no idea how you are still walking or talking your blood report says that you should be dead by now. I have no idea how you're still alive. Get your ass to the hospital now. And and I, I got, I, I did. I followed instructions for a change. <laughs> and I got like three or four bags of blood at that time. Um, so why am I sharing this? <laughs> it's a good story. And I'm also sharing this to tell you that I have learned so many lessons from my own life, like of giving into struggle, being in that state of struggle, and from adversity, I would never change it. When I look back at my life, I'll never change any of those experience because I learned such valuable life lessons, such valuable spiritual lessons. I would never change that. But back then, I was like, why is this happening to me? And my attention was constantly on how sick I was and why I wasn't getting better and why it was happening to me. The whole world was passing me by. I was angry. I was, I was like 25, 26, like pretty young, right? And then you're like, oh, I have all these dreams for my life. And now my life is like life is destroyed. And that's what the universe kept reflecting back. It, I didn't get better till I'm going to share until this, I shifted this, and I'm going to share this in a little bit with you guys about what shifted, and that will give you some more information on how to shift from a spiritual perspective in order to not be stuck with emotions. And this, 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 is, this is very vital. If you can grasp this and you can start to practice this every day, your life will really shift. Have you heard of the term? Again, you may or may not have already heard it. It's pretty popular now. Radical acceptance. Tara Brock talks about it. A lot of spiritual teachers talk about it. Radical acceptance means you're accepting your situation the way it is. You're just completely saying, I'm open to whatever comes my way. I don't know any other way. And just being with that sense of complete surrender. Not the surrender where you're throwing up your arms like in battle. It's not that kind of surrender, like, you know, let things happen to me. Not that type of surrender, but it's a surrender of to the divine and just saying, like, I don't know any other way. It's beyond me now. Please show me the next steps. Show me the path. That kind of surrender. That kind of and radical acceptance means accepting that your your emotions are taking over, accepting that wow, I'm getting consumed again. I've given in to these emotions again. Because what that does is brings compassion to your own self. You're no longer beating yourself up. Because again, when you're criticizing and blaming and feeling guilty about your own behavior or yourself, remember the vibrations that bring in. What's that going to do to you? It's going to repeat the cycle, rinse and repeat, rinse and repeat. We want to stop that cycle. Again, I remember this. I remember this again. This was the turning point in my illness. This was really the turning point. I remember lying in bed because I was pretty much bedridden other than doing random things like going to work, which I don't know what I was thinking about. But I lying in bed, it was a very painful illness too. Like I was just in a lot of pain. I remember lying in bed saying, okay, if this is my life, 
I, I, was, I was speaking to God. I said, whatever God or universe, whatever you want to call that, I was saying to the higher power or whatever you want to call that, saying, if this is what you have in store for me for the rest of my life, where I am just in bed, not utilizing my gifts or whatever I'm meant to do in this planet, so be it. I surrender. I am okay with whatever you have in store for me. And if that means spending the rest of my life on this bed, doing nothing, being in pain, I'm okay with it. And that change, just that shifted everything. I remember this night and day, like it was so clear, like just doing that and then feeling all these emotions come up and letting them all go. Like literally there was this relief and like this let go of emotions. And it would be a very lovely tale to say the next day I woke up and completely my illness was healed and all that. No, it took a few more years for me to get fully better. But that turning point opened up other doors for me. Opportunities came knocking in. Healers came into my life. People came into my life who said, okay, try this. This might help you. And I tried them and things started to heal. My body slowly started to get better. My mind started to shift. Everything started to shift. It started with managing my emotions. And that is why I'm bringing this up here. I'm sharing this example because managing your emotions is vital. Shifting your emotions. And the way to manage them is not by shoving them down, but it's also not giving in to them. Because when you start to manage emotions, things start to shift. It really does because you're not consumed by those emotions, creating those other events happening in your life that keeps you stuck and trapped. We know so little. The world is wide open in front of us, but we literally are like a little bird in a cage and we think that this is our entire world. It isn't. There's so much possibilities out there. You have to open your eyes, but that can only happen when you're not consumed by emotions, when you're a clear channel, when you have clarity. That's the biggest takeaway for you guys from this entire episode. Manage your emotions. Acknowledge them from a more practical standpoint. Acknowledge them and let them be. Let them wash over you. Don't give in, but also don't take it on and stay stuck in that place. Radical acceptance of your situation. Bringing in surrender, saying, okay, this is how I'm feeling right now. Can I accept myself the way I am? Can I stop beating myself up? And then you have to ask yourself, is this worth it, right? <laughs> What's my choice? You have a choice every second, of the ta- every second of the day. What am I going to choose? Am I going to choose giving into my emotions and being stuck? Or am I going to find another path and allow this to just let it be? And, and let it wash over you and move past these emotions. It's your choice. What's more important to you, living a life of peace and creating the life you want because you can have the life you want or giving into these emotions, feeling stuck in anger, fr- stress and frustration and, and creating a life that you don't want. It's your choice. So that wraps up for this episode. I have two requests. One is if you have questions and you would like me to talk about those particular topics, please email them to support at padmaali.com. My team will get them to me and I will definitely consider your questions or your topic. And the second one is please leave a review. I would so appreciate that. And as a way of reciprocity, because I really believe in law of reciprocity, when you write a review, take a screenshot and send it to support at padmaali.com. I will send you a gift card. It's just my way of saying thank you. All right, my friends, visionaries, I wish you the most amazing day, the most amazing week, and I will talk to you next week. Thank you so much for tuning in and listening to this podcast. Make sure to tag me in Instagram at Padma Ali to share your takeaways from this episode. And lastly, share with your friends and family so they can also benefit from listening to this podcast. For more tips, go on to our website, PadmaAli.com and connect with me at the next episode. Take care. Bye.